truth is speaking It's Gen Pop Lads, certified cash They don't know though Lazatola Hey yo, LAZ, make sure you check that store link in the descriptions and in the comment section. Now I mean it, cop up one of them gem pop tees, hoodies, or accessories. Eert. Back then, but he was one of them, you know, kind of upper escalade dudes. And he was getting ready to bag me for the chain. You know what I'm saying? And all bark was sticking in the back. And somehow he must have seen the move, you know, because that's what made Art Bark so powerful because of the whole Tomahawk Brownsville and everything. So, you know, he guard for real. And he seen the move get ready to go down. And all I remember him saying, Yo, Mother, better not touch no guards, you know? Mm. And, um,. To the top, we products of hip hop. For flipping cane in the spot to letting off gunshots, you need to stop with that watered down hip hop. Ayo, hey, LAZ, make sure you check that single and video from Chief Cherokee and Royal Flush. It's called Video Music Box. Check the description and the comment section for the Spotify link. Well, I had slipped and he jumped on top of me. I ain't even know he cut me. Like, and it was this old lady that worked there, she was a nurse, <laughs> and she seen me, me and her was real cool. She said, oh my God, she cut my baby, I didn't even know I was cut. She said, oh my God, she cut my baby, I cut it. Then he ran through it, he ran out, Shh, he ran. Then they took me out, they took me to the hospital, then I seen him in the pens, and I, when I seen him in the pens, I was walking past him, I just winked at him. Yeah. I mean, yo, I wanted to ask you like, you know, that picture of you and Pac, like, how did you meet Pac? Like, when was the first time you met Son, like? No, see, I, I knew Pac before that. In the younger time, we ain't see each other in a year, like, because, you know, we was Muslim, and, and it was it was an incident where his stepfather, where Pac was in the ranks, right? and his stepfather had him scared, and he, he had urinated in the ranks. That's when his moms and had broke out and went to Baltimore. They was at home, they went to Baltimore. What you we mean? You talking about together. back in the days? You talking about when y'all was kids? Yeah, back in the day, younger, yeah, kids, younger, younger. I, somebody in my family knew his mother, and we was in the same, we was in a mass gym. We was in a mass gym, and he was nervous, and he had, Pac had urinated in the ring. We was young, though. I ain't trying to say it ain't, like, disrespectful to him. That's my point. I, I, that's, that's my point. Um, and then that's when his mother had broke out, left the, left the step pops. What you mean? His pop, his step pops was on some abusive shit, and he got scared and and, and pissed. Yeah, yeah, he was aggressive. Yeah, he was aggressive. How old you talking? About? How old was y'all at that time? Like younger than teenagers. he was a teenager, younger, young. And he remembered you and Clint. You you reminded him who you was. Yeah, I remind, yeah, I reminded him. He said, "Oh yeah." Then we got you know. Then we start hanging out. We we going we in the yard together, chilling out, eating. He gave me a picture too with him and um. Jada Pickett. He gave me a picture with him and Jada Pickett, too. You know, I was just kicking with him and stuff like that, because that's when I had made my trip. This call is from a federal prison. Yeah, I changed from that street dude to trying to be an intellectual dude, and I was dropping some stuff on him and stuff like that. And he hit me on a picture, said, yo, thanks for the ounce of wisdom that you gave me, boom, boom. And he loved, uh, he loved, uh, Mike Tyson. That's his man. He loved Mike Tyson. Jada was his girl. Jada was in love with him, too. Jada Pickett. She was, she, was in, she, she was in love with Pop. Good um, dude, man. Never had his GED. People think like, yo, it's, well, people think they need that little formal paper to be smart, to be educated, but you don't, man. You could, you could, you could self-study and, and, and teach yourself. He was very, very studious. He was very educated. He never had his GED. Profound brother. Very profound. What block was that in Clinton, though? Where, where, where they had y'all at? upper H. That was segregation? Yeah. Yeah. I did a story with the bro Fuquan. He told me that first he came to Clinton. He was in regular population. Then they moved Oh, that's them. my man, Fuquan. I got a whole bunch of stories with Fuquan on the channel. Yeah, Fuquan was with me and Fishkill. Me and Fuquan was with me. Fuquan, they had the, um, the Sean incident, right? Yeah, 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 from LG. Yeah, so Sean by mistake. Yeah, Sean from LG. Red, Red, Carzan, and Oz and them sister. Yeah. Yeah, because son was um son said he was with Pac too in Clinton before he got segregated. Yeah, yeah, that's why I, I was there with him, man. I was, I was, I was 
was my eating part and all that. Yeah, that's my, that's my boy. My boy right there. Yeah, He was telling me about the incidents about, he was talking about a lot of stuff though, about you know, the, the kid's stretch incident. He was saying, you know, he was telling me about some incidents and stuff like that, what happened and all that. Boom, I was like, man. Good dude, good dude, good dude, man. You know, but you always gonna have haters, man. Even, I, you are, this is the crazy, man. I, I say this all the time, man. People love to hate, but hate to love, man. You know what I'm saying? For real, they love to hate, but hate to love. And because my nephew was telling me that somebody on my page said something about like they supposed to be my uh, family or something like that. First and foremost, uh, they not my family, whoever it is. Because I, I make a distinction between family and relatives. And it's by chance that they might be my relatives, but they definitely not my family. And if they wasn't in the household, how could they how could they say what occurred or what didn't occur in the household? So, you know, but people always gonna hate and and, and and that's just the bottom line, man. But my thing is this, man. It's just even in this environment that I'm in, I'm in one of the worst penitentiaries in, in, in the country, right? But there's some people who just seek attention, whether it's negative or positive. So I wouldn't even erase they. I wouldn't even erase their comments, man. They, they need attention. They need a little minute of fame or whatever, whatever, whatever they're seeking. And and they have to be them. Everybody has to be them in life. You know what I'm saying? That's that. And whoever he or she is, is just being them. You know what I'm saying? Although they may have a lost identity of who they are, they're striving to find it or, or be themselves. So give them a little minute of fame or whatever, because it doesn't hurt me. I'm secure in my stance, man. You know, and, and I'm good with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm good with it. But it could it could be somebody, that's, it, it could be a guy that's, that's, you know, that's waiting for his his transgender um operation or whatever, and he's emotional, so, because he can't afford the transgender operation. He's, he's expressing his emotions that way. He's like, you know, and it's all good. You know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, I don't have to lie to Chase Clout. You know what I'm saying? People who know me or heard of me know that, I, you know, that I, who I am or who I was in society. And I'm not talking about from a negative standpoint because, I eradicated the negativity and I became a positive individual in the community, uplifting the youth. So, you know, but he or she lied to my, my mother couldn't handle me at the age of 10 or whatever, boom, boom. There's nobody I love more than my mother. Now I'm gonna speak the truth, whether it's against myself or not. My mother was an alcoholic and she did. She had sex for alcohol. You know what I'm saying? If it's me, I'm gonna speak the truth. If it's my mother, I'm gonna speak the truth. And I love no one more than I love my mother. I love my mother to death. But however, I'm going to speak the truth. Even when I was writing my book, when I asked my mother, I said, I'm going to tell some things about what daddy was doing, what my father was doing. She said, okay, okay. And I said, mom, I'm going to speak the truth about you too. And at that time, she said, no, don't write the book, then don't write it. <laughs> I said, nah. I said, it's not fair, mother, that I can speak the truth about him. But refrain from speaking the truth about you. And, and this is something that I can't do. So whoever he or she is, man, I, maybe they don't even know him because I, 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 I don't fear anyone, so I don't have to lie. People you know what, what I'm lying for, who do I fear? So, I don't know, or I'm, no, I'm not trying to obtain anything through my life, through what he perceived or he, he or she perceived as a lie. So it's all good. Let them have their minute of fame or whatever, but then I just hope they get their money up for their, their um, transgender um, operation. Man. Beautiful last, you know why? Because when people talk about, even in this environment that I'm in, in a prison environment, people talk behind your back, they say things, they, they, they inadvertently say things. You know, to me, that's a coward because you didn't say it to me, and I don't feed into it if you say it behind my back because that's just proving that you're a coward. And I let cowards even need their position. So you stay in your position. As long as you don't confront me with it, you remain a coward. And I'm all right with that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Whoever he or she is, it's okay, man. Everybody wants to know about that situation that happened in Brooklyn House when you got cut in Brooklyn House. Well, we came to the gym. It happened in the gym. And I was with my man. Uh, who was with me? Best. Best Squirrel. Low crime at the time. Uh, kid came up to me, asked me who I was or whatever. Boom, boom. So we scrapping. Me and the kid Ike, we scrapping. Boom, boom. I'm hitting him because you know I used to box. So I'm getting, but I was still, I was little at the time. I was always little. And when I came in, I was little. So I had slipped and he jumped on top of me. I didn't even know he cut me. Right? Like, and it was this old lady that worked there. She was a nurse. <laughs> and she seen me, me and her was real cool. She said, oh my God, she cut my baby. I didn't even know I was cut. She said, oh my God, she cut my baby. I cut it. Then he ran through it. He ran out. Shh, he ran. Then they took me out. They took me to the hospital. Then I see him in the pens. And I, when I seen him in the pens, I was walking past him. And I just winked at him. Right? I just winked at him and that was it. That, that's how the incident happened. I think that he went home like a 
week later, um, I heard he got he got killed or something like that. That was Ike Livingston. Yeah, Ike Livingston. Yeah. And they kept you in Brooklyn House, or they sent you to the island. I think that I stayed in Brooklyn House for maybe like a week, two weeks. Yeah, and then they um they packed up and sent me to the island. Yeah, they sent me to the ninety five at that time. C ninety five. I think I went to C ninety five after that. This call is from a federal prison. My book is just it's based on my life story, and I just spoke on a lot of the things that happened in childhood, and because. A lot of times we prejudge people and not knowing, you know I'm saying, it's what they've been through in life. And, and it's important that we understand before we judge people what they have been through in life. So we can have a better um, a better outlook on them and a better judgment. So the book is just based on, you know, it's just showing you that people could go through things that cause them to become who they are or what they are in life. You know, so... That's all I was just describing in my book, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we get called somebody a, a demon or call somebody this or, and, and don't know what caused them to transform into that particular attribute, whatever they're being called. But, you know, it's just, it's just showing, you know, how, you know, because people, even the feds now, in this case right here, the feds, they describe me as a, as a, 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 a vicious person, uh, the enforcer, I was an enforcer of an organization, uh, why they called me Kool Aid? Because I used to crack. I used to come, I used to come through walls shooting. This is what the feds was trying to depict me as. And the crazy part: this is a person who they all the things that all the negative things they describe of me it happened in 1989, 1988, 19, 30 something years, 30 something years ago. But they ignoring the fact that just in. When I came home in 2011 to 2019, I was I was speaking at group homes. I started my own program. I had my own talk show. I, I was talking. I was speaking at colleges. I spoke for the mayor of New York City as a keynote speaker. I did all of these things, but that was being ignored. And I call that the media, the media syndrome. Because you know how the media, you could do 11 good things for a person, and when you do the, the 12th bad, the 12th time they could do something bad, and they just ridicule you like never did anything good so you know this is what the fans did to me to, you know they negative 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 but it's all good because i know who i am today man i know who i was yesterday and i know who i am today what's your sign my sign yeah, yeah i'm a sagittarius my birthday december 12th I, w w one of the things i want to say to the listeners is this this is very really important man because you know uh one of the one of my quotes, one of my quotes that I've come up with is that if you re, if you if you resist a boy from expressing his emotions, then you are creating a damaged man, right? And I say that because I'm surrounded by a lot of damaged men, and even in society, there's a lot of a lot of damaged men, you know, where they're beating up women and things of that nature. I think these are damaged men, and it's predicated on. When, we, when our little boy, for example, our little boy or whatever, he falls and scrapes his knee, right, and he begins to cry, normally the father say, man up, man up, stop crying. Men don't cry like that. Men don't, you know, you are creating a damaged man when you're restricting this boy from expressing his emotions. As Because if your little daughter does the same thing, you would console her. You would console her and say, baby, don't cry, it's going to be okay. And an emotion is a, a human characteristic, not just for a female, but for a male also. So I think the guys who are listening, please, man, allow your boys to express their emotions or you're going to create a damaged man such as yourself. Because if you're doing that, then you're damaged also and you're going to predicate and you're going to, you're going to perpetuate that damage into that individual. So that's one of the main things I definitely wanted to um, highlight, man. It's very important, man. That's definitely a fact, man. That's, that's, that's toxic masculinity when we teach our, our sons that they can't never ever be emotional you feel me like you pin that emotion up that's gonna explode eventually exactly man exactly i remember my father used to tell me that boy don't cry you ain't but you a girl you ain't no little girl don't be crying but it's a human characteristics it's an emotion <laughs> you know what i'm saying that the creator instilled in all humanity it's okay to cry you see and and it doesn't make sense so a lot of guys too and a guy was in here, I was just having a conversation with a dude, with a brother in here. He was saying, I couldn't show my weakness. I said, man, it's a strength for a man to show his weakness. 
It's a strength. When we deal with vulnerabilities, man, people say, yo, I can't, I, I, I'm, I can't show my vulnerability. No, it's a strength to show your vulnerability. It's okay to be vulnerable, man. It's powerful, man, to say, yo, I got a weakness, man. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you, bro. That's why they loving you on this channel already, man, because, you know, you, 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 you talking about your vulnerable side. And that's how this channel blew up, bro. This channel blew up because... Everybody I had on here, including myself, I ain't leave out the losses. When shit happened to me, I let it be known. You feel me? When I was scared, I told niggas I was scared to death. Coming through Comstock, 17 years old, in a max jail. No hair on my face, looking like a My Little Pony. You feel what I'm saying? Coming through the stock. I was scared to death. And it's okay. See, that's what I'm saying. And it's a, See, but most people, most of these, these so-called gangsters, they think... As if they don't have any vulnerability. Yes, but they just masquerade them. They hide them better. But it's okay to express them. You see what I'm saying? And, and I, I would say this about the losses. Because <laughs> to me, some people, people who strive for success, they don't see roadblocks. People who, 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 who have a mindset of failure, they see roadblocks. People who strive for success, they see stepping stones. So... To, in order to become who you are in life, you have to go through what you had to go through in life. And I don't say it as a loss because look at the platform or look at the individual you have become today. So everything in back of you was just pushing you to your success. So I don't 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 visualize it as a loss because you didn't lose anything. All those things behind you allowed you to gain the things that you have gained today. You didn't lose, brother. Unless you still have the mindset of a lot of individuals. When I came home after doing 22 years, I still see some people on the same corner. They've lost because they're still doing the same thing at the age of 40-something, 30-something, 50 that you was doing at the age of 18, 19, and 20. Then you have uh, uh, lost tremendously. You have lost tremendously. Max, you got a mental illness that you need to address. And I was talking to a brother here today. Just today I was speaking about this, is that it's so sad that we don't see the things as traumatic. When we walk over a dead body where we come from, it's normal to us, right? When we hear gunshots, it's normal to us. When we see syringes, crack valves and all that in our streets, it's normal to us. But we normalize abnormality. All of this is not normal, man. Abuse of, of abuse of our mothers and our fathers and stuff like that—it's not normal. But it's we are so used to it that we normalize it, and it's sad, man. It's, it's sad, and this is why it's important for us to study and get out of that, man. Get out of that cycle, man. Or we're going to continue to repeat the cycle. We're going to continue to repeat, repeat it. Yeah, man. It's things we experience casually that you know other races, creeds, and cultures. And I mean, people from different walks of life, they might be in therapy for five years for that. Exactly. And we ain't never have no therapy. We just had exactly. to suck it up and say, this the hood. And this is why we're still damaged, man. But I call us damaged goods because if you got a piece of fruit that's rotten, you take out the rotten piece and you still got good left. So we're still damaged good, but man, but don't ignore the good in yourself. That's all I'm saying. Truth is speaking. It's Gen Pop Lads, certified cash. They don't know though. Lads and Tola. Hey yo, LAZ, make sure you check that store link in the descriptions and in the comment section. Now I mean to cop up one of them Gen Pop tees, hoodies, or accessories. You're back then but he was one of them you know kind of upper escalon dudes and he was getting ready to bag me for the chain you know what i'm saying and all bark was sticking in the back and somehow he must have seen the move you know because that's what made all bark so powerful because of the whole tomahawk brownsville and everything so you know, he guard for real, and he seen the move getting ready to go down, and all I remember him saying, no more, better not touch no guards, you know? Mm. And, um... To the top, we products of hip-hop, from flipping cane in the spot to letting off gunshots, you need to stop with that watered-down hip-hop. 
Ayo hey, LAZ, make sure you check that single and video from Chief Cherokee and Royal Flush. It's called Video Music Box. Check the description and the comment section for the Spotify 